and disappear. No more. From now on, I'm treating time as an asset. I'm not going to spend it. I'm going to invest it in things that really matter. My bank has got to respect that. Welcome back to Vintage Orange. I'm Bob Kessling of the Ball Network. The 1973 season was a disappointing one for Tennessee as the Volunteers went 8-4 and four overall. But individually, it was a banner season for quarterback Condridge Holloway as he was named All-SEC. But all the dancing and the darting and the hits were now starting to take their toll on Tennessee's quarterback. And also, the wear and tear of being the starting shortstop on the Tennessee baseball team. So heading into the 74 season, it was a beat up and bruised Holloway that was trying to lead Tennessee to that elusive SEC championship. Tennessee football, 1974. This was the earliest opening date in Tennessee football history, as the Vols play host to UCLA, ranked in the top 10 when Tennessee played them. On the second play from scrimmage, without going into a huddle, quarterback Holloway fades and throws a long pass to Stanley Morgan, who started the season as a split end. And the speedy sophomore scores on this 74-yard play. The Vols jump off to a 7-0 lead over the Bruins. Later in the first quarter, as he scrambled on this play, Holloway is injured, a critical factor in the overall season. With Holloway out and young Pat Ryan at quarterback, the Vol defense, a big question mark before the season, came of age with two crucial goal line stands. Tennessee stopped UCLA on two different series inside the five-yard line. But the Bruins overtake the Vols anyway to lead 17 to 10. When in the fourth quarter, after visiting the hospital for x-rays, Holloway returns to the field. First, the senior quarterback passes to sophomore Dale Fair of Elizabethton, Tennessee, for 17 yards as the Vols begin their 80-yard do-or-die drive, which is culminated by Holloway himself on this run around right end and this patented die that makes possible the 17-17 tie. But the game was costly in that Holloway sustained injuries which were to plague him throughout the season. And in fact, in the next game with Kansas, Randy Wallace, himself sidelined with a viral illness through most of fall practice and the UCLA game, got the nod to start against the Jayhawks. After a loss at Auburn, the nation's eighth-ranked team, in the first road game of the year, the Vols returned to Neyland Stadium to meet Tulsa, a team which itself, late in the season, earned a top-20 rating. The Vols started swiftly against the Hurricanes as Stanley Morgan, now playing at tailback, takes a pitch from Holloway and carries for 11 yards. The speedy sophomore from Easley, South Carolina, sets up the first touchdown moments later on this 15-yard run, and Tennessee takes an early 7-0 lead over Tulsa. The Vols extend their lead in the second quarter when Ricky Townsend kicks a 36-yard field goal to make the score 10 to nothing. Tulsa comes back to tie the game 10 to 10 when late in the game, the Vols, faced with fourth and one, call on Neil Claybo to punt. The Knoxville senior, who finished second in the nation in punting for the season, hits it perfectly. The Tulsa safety man lets the punt drop and it rolls dead at the Hurricane two-yard line. The Vols use their timeouts wisely. The defense holds, and Tulsa is forced to punt from the end zone with less than a minute left in the game. As the Tulsa line holds the punt rush, the Vols build a winning wall for safety man Stanley Morgan, who returns the punt 48 yards for the game-winning touchdown. It's 17 to 10, do or die. 
the Tennessee defense proved itself again early. This time putting the stop on Calvin Culliver's fourth down touchdown try. The Vols hold for four downs inside the five. But in the second period, Alabama scores to take a seven to nothing lead. One minute later, Morgan breaks free, pops loose from tackles, and runs 64 yards to give the Vols a touchdown. By now, Morgan has established himself as one of the SEC's top running backs. penalty prevents Tennessee from trying for the extra point and it's seven to six Alabama at halftime in the second half Alabama explodes for a 28 to 6 win and the Vols stand at the crossroads finishing the rugged first six games two three and one <laughs> It was a time for testing, as the Vols played host to rugged Clemson the next week. Despite this early Vol touchdown on a pass from Holloway to Morgan, it isn't until the final seconds of the game that the Vols turned it around to begin the second season of 1974. is tied 7-7 when the Vols sophomore tailback Mike Gales breaks free and races 35 yards to score. Gales, a Cincinnati sophomore, played a key role in the Vols' second season surge, and this makes the score 13-7. Clemson comes back to grab a 21 to 13 advantage when once again the do or die Vols pull a fourth quarter miracle. First, it's Stanley Morgan, who grew up near Clemson, South Carolina, who takes this pitch out and races 33 yards to pull the Vols to a 21 to 19 deficit. Quarterback Holloway continues the tradition of big two-point conversions with this sweep of right end. The final lunge pulls the ball into a 21-21 tie. But Clemson bounces back again and leads 28 to 21 when the Vols begin an 80-yard 16-play march, capped by this 8-yard sweep of the end by Morgan. Now the score is 28-27 Clemson. The decision is made. Go for the win with seconds left. And here's the play for the two-point conversion that really started the Vols' second season of 1974. Holloway starts to the right. He's hemmed in. He scrambles. He struggles. And finally throws it high into the end zone, where clutch catcher Larry Sievers leaps and grabs the game-winning two-pointer. Tennessee beats Clemson 29 to 28. And an open date gives the Vols a chance to heal. Then it's Memphis State. The tone of the game is set on the first play, as Vol linebacker Andy Spiva makes this stunning tackle on the Tiger runner. Sophomore Mike Gales gets the Vols rolling against Memphis State, enjoying the Tigers' finest season in years, before a capacity crowd in Knoxville, with this catch and 20-yard run to the State 32. Moments later, tailback Morgan vaults into the end zone to build the Vols' lead to 10 to nothing over Memphis State. In the second quarter, Holloway sets a new Tennessee record for career total offense with this nine-yard dash as the Vols continue to look sharp against the Tigers. With 45 seconds left in the first half, Holloway connects with flanker John Yarbrough, a junior from Salisbury, North Carolina, for a 14-yard scoring pass. The Vols have a 16 to nothing halftime lead. Following a Stanley Morgan touchdown, the Vol defense comes up with another big play. This time, it's freshman linebacker Greg Jones from Bristol, who intercepts a state pass and returns it 26 yards to set up the Vol's final touchdown as Tennessee rolls to a 34-6 victory over Memphis State. And then the sun and shadows of Shields Watkins Field are exchanged for the rain-swept Memphis Memorial Stadium for the SEC battle with Ole Miss. And the Vols turn back a determined Ole Miss opening drive at their own two-yard line. 
the ball offense takes over. As Holloway scrambles to ignite a scoring drive with this pass to tight end Tommy West, who evades a defender and carries to the Ole Miss 47. tailback Stanley Morgan, this time getting a key block at the corner, who rambles down the sideline for 38 yards and the ball's first touchdown of the day. Leading 7-3 in the third quarter, the Vols get a timely interception from senior linebacker Hank Walter, who runs the ball deep into Ole Miss territory. Fumbles, but sophomore Mike Bonk recovers for Tennessee. across for the touchdown and Tennessee leads 13 to 3 to the delight of fans and teammates alike. The Vols march 80 yards in this well executed drive which is culminated by Holloway's six yard run for a touchdown as the Vols build their advantage over the Rebels. Tennessee gets its final score on this 52-yard pass from Holloway to Sievers, now established as one of the premier receivers in the country. Tennessee wins 29-17 over Ole Miss. Next comes Kentucky. Both teams are keyed up, knowing that the winner of this game in Knoxville will get a bid to the Liberty Bowl. In the first quarter, Holloway passes complete to John Yarbrough to set up a Ricky Townsend field goal. Tennessee uses an unbalanced line and cockeyed eye backfield, dubbed the Liberty Formation, to overpower the Wildcats, who had decisively won over Vanderbilt and Florida the previous two weekends. Watch the blocking power develop as the balls open an 80-yard drive. Stanley Morgan caps the second period drive with this touchdown from the two-yard line, and the Vols lead Kentucky 10 to nothing. Tennessee is ready on offense and defense in a typical Tennessee-Kentucky game. Here, junior Ronnie McCartney pounds quarterback Mike Fanusi to the ground with a vicious pass rush. Fanusi leaves the game. With a 13-0 lead in the third quarter, fullback Paul Carruthers, senior from Lafayette, Georgia, whose punching blocks have been the key to many runs by Gales and Morgan, breaks free himself on a 25-yard run. Carruthers' run sets up this five-yard touchdown effort moments later by Stanley Morgan, and Tennessee goes on to a decisive 24-7 win over the Wildcats. The junior from Gainesville, Georgia, is pushed out of bounds. On the next play, Stanley Morgan dives into the end zone, and Tennessee leads Vanderbilt 7 to nothing in the opening minutes. Big plays are the order of the day, and on its next possession, the Vols move again. This time, a 39-yard run by Mike Gales around right end puts the ball on the Vanderbilt one-yard line. dives into the end zone for the second touchdown and after a faulty snap takes away the extra point Tennessee leads Vanderbilt 13 to nothing the Commodores battle back and apparently Vanderbilt has its first win in a decade over the balls 21 to 13 with less than a minute left then the Vandy punter bobbles the snap on a fourth down punt and Tennessee has a chance from the Vanderbilt 11 yard line With no timeouts left and seconds ticking away, the character of the team comes through. Here is Morgan behind a wave of blocking with a crucial nine-yard run to the Vanderbilt one. 
certainty digs in. Yet despite the determined Commodore defense, the Vol swing Morgan free to the right, and the sophomore barely edges into the end zone for a touchdown that makes it 21 to 19 Vanderbilt. Another two-point conversion is a necessity. And Tennessee comes up with the play as Holloway connects with leaping Larry Sievers to pull off an unbelievable comeback against Vanderbilt. It's 21-21, a tie. On to the Liberty Bowl, where the balls are underdogs to powerful Maryland, known for its explosive offense. By now, Tennessee's defense has made great strides, and it caps its season's performance with plays like this. Lonnie McCarthy comes from the backside to stop the Terps Carter on the first play from scrimmage. Later in the same period, McCartney and senior Robert Pulliam and others drop quarterback Avellini for a two-yard loss. The game settles into a defensive struggle. In the fourth quarter, Mike Gale sweeps the end for a 17-yard gain, but the Vols can't keep the drive alive. Maryland is protecting a 3-0 lead late in the game, and they need only one yard for an important first down and possession. But Carter is slowed by Kevin Davis and stopped by John Murdick and Mike Mock for no gain. It's fourth down, so Maryland drops back to punt. But the snap to punter Wagenheim is too high, and the Vols have new life. or die. Sophomore Randy Wallace is in at quarterback, and he throws this perfect strike to wide receiver Larry Sievers in the end zone. Tennessee caps its second season of 1974 with a courageous 7-3 Liberty Bowl win over... Wake up and smell the hockey! The thrashers are here! Ilya Kovachuk is here! He's the evolution of a game which began on a frozen pond decades before there were leagues and teams. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. No, 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 wait. He's a wolf in wolf's clothing. He's the one that's got the other cities talking. The one that has the other cities nervous. The future is staring you in the eyes. And it wants to know, what's it going to take to make you true blue? Thrashers Hockey, 404-249-6400 or buy online at atlantathrashers.com. Monday night, it's Tennessee night on CSS. See the Philip Palmer Show starting at 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 Central. Then stay tuned for the Tennessee football game. CSS, it's your source for Southeast sports and available only on cable. Tune in for Tennessee night on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Good news comes in many ways when it's time to hit the trail from the Cumberland Plateau to the Cherokee National Forest and the paved roads in between. It's time for a Jeep, and no place knows Jeep like Tilly Lane Jeep Country. Your Jeep Outfitters come choose from a large selection of Wranglers, Jeep Liberties built for adventure, and the perennial SUV award winner, the refined Jeep Grand Cherokees. You'll like the price, the award-winning service, and the people at Tilly Lane Jeep Country, your Jeep Outfitters in Lenore City. Now, isn't it nice to hear good news for a change? Condridge Holloway's final game as Tennessee's quarterback was in the 1974 Liberty Bowl game. But it was Randy Wallace, not Holloway, who threw the winning touchdown pass in that 7-3 victory over Maryland. Holloway was on the sideline nursing a sore shoulder. You would hate to think what kind of numbers Holloway could have put up if he could have stayed healthy through his entire career. As it was, he finished third all-time in Tennessee passing when he completed that 1974 season. Meanwhile, on the baseball field, Holloway shined. He was an All-American in 1975. In fact, he hit 396 that season, yet he opted for a career in the Canadian Football League, not in Major League Baseball. In the Canadian Football League, he eventually made the Hall of Fame. That's a look back at Condridge Holloway, Tennessee's all-star quarterback from 1972 through 1974. I'm Bob Kessling, and that's this edition of Vintage Orange. Tennessee Football Classics, Vintage Orange, is brought to you by First Tennessee Bank, the official bank of the Vols, by State Farm Insurance, and the more than 400 State Farm agents in Tennessee who support volunteer football. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Ford, and your Tennessee Ford dealers, where you'll find quality people, quality products throughout Tennessee. And by Budweiser, choosing a designated driver is always a good game plan. Welcome back to The Big Show, brought to you by Hound Dogs. You know, Hound Dogs is The Big Show. Now let's go live to that ultimate ball fan, Snapper. Snapper, are you there? I'm here, Snapper. 
Light and hound dogs, and you're right. This is the place for all fans. You won't find a bigger or better selection anywhere. There's something for everyone. I don't know why anybody would shop anywhere else. Well, there you have it. Hound dogs, where real UT fans shop. Fall into men of measure and men of stature big and tall clothiers for the newest fall fashions for guys of size. Choose the look and get the fit for comfort with free alterations with purchase. Over 70 lines of top quality menswear, including Cutter and Buck, Savane, Levi's, and Hathaway. Our goal is to offer the very best service possible with quality merchandise and selection. Men of measure and men of stature serving Tennessee at three great locations. Fashion, fit, selection, and savings for guys of size. Hi, Joe Fisher here with some important news for you. If you're into team sports, running, fitness, or other sports activity, then you need to get in to Sports Seat. You'll find a huge selection of all the top brands of shoes for running, walking, or general exercise. Names you can trust like Nike, New Balance, Adidas, Saucony, and more. And Sports Seasons has the right clothes for you to wear, too. So if you're into sports, then get in to Sports Seasons. Sports Seasons. Any season, any reason. It's got room for all your gear. Like a pickup, it plays as hard as it works. With a cargo box, locking rear diff, and twice the carrying capacity of most ATVs. The Polaris All-Terrain Pickup. The ATV that lets you do more, more easily. Am I gonna get in trouble? No, you're not gonna get in trouble. I can't go to school if I'm sick. Just go to school so you can get some lunch. Then you can come home afterwards. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. Here at 65 10 tonight. And the deep color, boy, look at the, can't believe how dark this is for Carrot 65. 85 points of diamonds, they're BS diamonds, H to I color, they're clean white stones. Big diamonds in this piece. Eight solid 18 karat gold. It is an antique style mounting. Look at this. We have this ring at $6,500. Look at the carving on this piece. Absolutely magnificent. This is a ring from the designer Ben Co. And this ring would be a fortune in a high end store. The very best price I can do on this ring sell the ring for forty nine hundred and seventy dollars. Forty nine hundred and seventy dollars on that beautiful ring. Is that not gorgeous or what? And I gave a, really a too low price on that ring. You want it under $5,000, i am doing the best I can. It should have been uh, more than that. $4,970, it's a beauty. That, this ring was from, uh, no, Ben Coe is an award-winning gemstone cutter. He cut that center stone, it's beautiful. Let me know on that, we're gonna go to the next item. Do I have a sapphire for you? Oh my gosh. Wait till you see this one. You want to talk about cashmere blue? This might be nicer than the other stone. Look, wait till you see this. And I'm going to give you first shot since you missed the other stone. This stone will sell immediately. I will give you first shot at it. Look at the color on this. I'm telling you, this stone, 5,000, 6,000 to carry it all day long. Look at this one. Wow. 101-53368. 101-53368. Is that not incredible? That is a super royal cashmere colored sapphire. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely gorgeous.
This is a very conservative 5,000 a carat. I'm telling you, this stone, I don't think you can find this for under 6,000 a carat. I'll go with our appraisal at 17, what we had up there. Which list is it? No, it's 5,000 a carat times 4.16. Was it a 4.16 or a 3? Wow, let me weigh the stone, see what's going on here. Sorry about that, we had a, a computer error there. It is at 4.16. Beautiful, beautiful, intense color on this one. I tell you what, now we have it at 16.440. It's really too low on that stone, I can tell you that. We have a regular asking price of $82.20. And I tell you what, we have the stone at $5,900. And I tell you what, John, get on the phone. I'm going to see what, I'm going to close this stone out too. I'm going to give you a special price since you missed the other stone. This one is absolutely magnificent. That one is beautiful. You will have first shot of the stone. Let me show you this with the mounting. Absolutely gorgeous stone. That stone, I tell you, this should be at twenty thousand dollars plus on the list price. Should be at twenty thousand dollars plus. Beautiful, beautiful royal blue sapphire in the cashmere blue color. And that will come with a gemological appraisal too. John, give me a call on that. We'll see what we can do. We'll, we can do a little better price for you. Let's go to the next item. All right, I've, uh, I'll let someone have that stone in just a minute. We'll give you a minute courtesy on it. Connie, let's see. Um, this says ruby. Somebody gave me a sapphire. <laughs> All right, let's see who's next here. We have. Um, Okay, Mr. R, you wanted another very good customer. You wanted a stone silver of the pair that we just sold. I have one. Go ahead and get on the phone. A 33.26 carat. You can have for uh, $266. Also the darker color. Here we go. $266. That is for Mr. R. 33.36 carat, add 10 points to it, 33.36, there you go, $266, that stone is yours, we will hold that for you, one of our very good customers. And Mr. Rick, you want an imperial topaz. 